Good evening, and welcome to Unity Church on the Mountain on the Road. Today I'm recording from my home. The talk today is titled, The Glory Within. But before that, let's begin with our opening statement. There is only one presence and one power in my life and the universe. God. And in honor of all of the children in the world, all of the children in our lives, and each of us, because within each of us is that inner child. Let us affirm together the children's blessing. We love you. We bless you. We behold the Christ in you. We accept you just the way you are. Walk in beauty. You are divine. So let us inhale together a deep breath. Breathing in and releasing. And another deep breath as we relax into this moment. The tension leaves our bodies. We become more relaxed. As the body becomes more relaxed, the mind becomes more still. And we go deeper, closer to that secret place inside of us where we can affirm together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And leave us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So we begin to go deeper. Closer to the silence. To that secret place within us. Where we can find the inner presence, the divine within us, and we are in touch with spirit. Breathing, watching our breath, and with each breath we become a little more relaxed, a little more still inside. And from this place of stillness, we affirm that we are spiritual beings. We are children of the one source, each of us divine, whole, and harmonious. And we think about that love, that big love, and call to mind a time in our life that we can remember feeling that love, big love, unconditional, not a romantic love, but a pure, unconditional love. The love that Spirit has for each of us. Where there is nothing to forgive because there is nothing wrong. 
feeling that love that is called grace for each of us. We are grateful. Not grateful only for this love, only grateful. Grateful for everything. Grateful in everything. And with this spirit of gratitude, we say thank you. And so it is. Amen. As I said, the title of the talk today is The Glory Within. And what can that mean? To say the glory within. To me, it can only mean one thing. That within us, within each of us, is that spark of the divine, the comforter, the spirit of source working through us, the Christ within. And how do we come to know this presence? What are some techniques that we can put in practice so that we can be in that presence. And by this I mean be aware of the truth of who we are in our daily lives. Working towards the goal of that realization in each moment. I've been talking a lot recently about the welcoming practice. And I know it's right because it keeps coming back to me from different sources. I'm getting more and more information and feeling it more and more in my personal practice. But I want to remind us of some other techniques that we can put to use to bring ourselves back to center. Our lives are a series of opportunities, situations that bring us away from center so that we can realize that we have moved and then bring ourselves back to center. So there are always these opportunities in our lives that we have to realize that we are moved away or turned away from spirit and we have now an opportunity to bring us back to center. So in early unity teaching there was a very powerful practice and I've seen it effective in my life. And that's the denial followed by the affirmation. And I like them in pairs. Affirmations can work by themselves. And I've heard some people say that they don't like denials. But when we're in the middle of the jumbled thoughts, the chaos of ego consciousness going back and forth and over and under and all around, Sometimes the only way to get that pause long enough to bring in an affirmation is to use a powerful denial. That denial can be something very simple. And I believe that it's, it's best and most effective with a very short and powerful denial. If you're in a position where you can speak it aloud, do so. We have that power center in our throat. And as we verbalize an affirmation or denial, it adds that extra oomph. So a good denial that I've found effective is not this. Another one, pause. I've heard others say that 
cancel, or delete can be affected. But here is the most important part and the very key. Because if all we do is deny, then what are we doing? We're focusing on the problem. And the golden key tells us to stop thinking about the difficulty, no matter what it is, and think about God instead. So the power of the denial is to pull us out of that cycle of thoughts that are going everywhere into whatever error of thinking, be it anxiety, fear, panic, depression, despair, thoughts of lack, any of these. When, you, when we notice that, we have an opportunity. When we notice those error thoughts, we have opportunity to bring ourselves back to center. A quick denial, not this. Followed right afterwards. I mean immediately afterwards. Because we create this vacuum when we, when we deny by not this. That vacuum that will be filled immediately by other thoughts if we do not bring in the affirmation. So the affirmation, I am a child of God. That one is very quick. You could just say, I am. I am spirit, perfect, whole, and harmonious. The important thing is that about the affirmation is that it affirms truth and that it feels right to you. God is guiding me now. The word is written on my heart. So there we go. It's been a part of unity since the very beginning. That's the power of the denial followed by an affirmation or affirmations. Keep the affirmation at the top of your mind so that when you do the denial, it's right there and ready to follow, to fill that gap, ending whatever thoughts of the difficulty are and bringing the thinking, bringing the attention back to spirit. Since I've been practicing this welcoming practice and follow the line, I remembered another very quick way to have that experience of welcoming and release. It's something that for a while I practiced a lot and then it kind of left my consciousness and just kind of sat here in the back of my mind. And that is the Moses Code calling upon the name of God. I am that. I am. And it can be used to welcome things that we see as being positive in our life, like, like a very powerful love instant, or things that are more part of our shadow, that we don't really think is part of us, but really is a part of us, and can be stealing our power or bringing themselves out at times that are not appropriate. I'll give you some examples. It's probably been maybe a year, maybe a little over a year, since um, Joyce Burks turned 90. And there was a big birthday party for Joyce. Um, it was over close to Huntsville Hospital. And I remember having trouble with my navigation and not being able to find the building. And I parked my car and got out and walked and 
and eventually I did find it and I went in and I was I was one of the later arrivals and so with this large and loving family full they filled the room and there was barely a seat left but um, my the Unity Church on the Mountain family saw me and welcomed me in and brought me to a place they set a, a chair right there right there in front of, of Joyce and it was a wonderful place to be and I was experiencing all of this love around and at that time I was really using the I am that I am the Moses code to experience oneness And I, I can remember several times where I would see something and, and say, I am that. And let the universe whisper back, I am. And just feeling this overwhelming energy of the moment. And at, at Joyce's 90th birthday party was one of those times. So I was sitting there, and I'm not sure if it was if he was a nephew or a son. I'm not sure if Joyce had children or not. But <clears throat> this man walked up behind Joyce, and he he just gently put his his hands on her shoulders, just laid his hands there, and and bent over and whispered something in her ear. I couldn't hear what it was. But I was just in the middle of affirming, I am that. I am. At the moment that he did this. And the, the love energy that was coming from this connection that was being made hit me. It hit me like, like a hard bass note. Just boom, it hit me in the chest. And it was a, just such a wonderful feeling. To feel this energy and know that I was one with it. This connection was shared in that moment. So that was an example of how to, or how I have seen it work with something that was very positive. I've also used it though as more of a welcoming practice, to welcome something that I saw in myself in a moment that I wasn't really, mm, I didn't really desire this to be a part of me. That's why it's in the shadow. So I was going to KFC to get us some dinner that evening through the drive through And when I, um, I placed my order and I came around to the window and there was a young man there um, I'm sure he was much taller than me um, but what struck me first was he had tattoos on his arms and they they didn't it wasn't a full sleeve tattoo but there were they were plentiful I want to say there was one on his neck and so the immediate thought that struck me was, why would they let someone like that serve food? Now, I caught myself. About the time that that thought finished in my head, I realized what I was doing. That I had laid down a judgment upon this human being based on an outer appearance. Instead of seeing him for the divine child of God that he is. I saw these outer tattoos and, and made a snap judgment. When I realized that I had done it, I was still practicing the I am that I am, the Moses Code. So I went right into that. And I didn't even look over him, over at him. In fact, I was looking, I think my hands were on the steering wheel and I was looking at my hands and I just affirmed with my thoughts being on him, I am that. I am. 
And I think I did it twice. And I heard him speaking to me. So I, I turned and looked. And he had said something like, oh, I know these were really good because I had one myself. And he, he said, I'm adding um, a free dessert to your dinner. I, I, I was just taken aback. He was adding a chocolate cake to my, to my order without charge. I mean, what a... I, 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 just, I just felt that... Honestly, I felt that love. It, 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 or, or, or graciousness, or I don't know. I, I really don't have any other way to say it other than that love. And it wasn't just a little piece of cake. This was a... This was a cake, a whole cake. And I will say, when I got home, Lucretia and I ate that cake and it was good. <laughs> I never thought it would have been so good being coming from a store. So he was right. And he had, I mean, right after I had those thoughts, here's, this is what happened. I go into that oneness state and he gives me this cake. So the I am that I am, which we call the Moses Code. There's a book by James Francis Twyman called the Moses Code. And there's also a movie that's on YouTube for free called the Moses Code that's by James Francis. So I suggest, you know, I, I strongly suggest, you know, looking into this. Wayne Dyer um, did a, um, I don't know if he did a book, but I know he released a CD where he used the Moses Code um, and talked about how he used it in his daily um, meditations. So we have the welcoming practice. I want to review that really quickly. It's, it's, it's really just a more extensive... Um, in fact, after the, the Moses Code, it would be really easy to follow with the welcoming practice. To sense where, when, when, when we go off that center, what does that make, what does that feel like in our body? What is that, you know, where is it centered? Is there a tension somewhere? There's almost always going to be some kind of tension somewhere, but not necessarily. Sometimes it's just an, an ooky feeling in the stomach or, or it's going to be different for each person. So there's really no cookie cutter way of describing what a certain thought pattern or emotion is going to do to the body. Um, any type of stress that was almost always going to manifest as, as a tension somewhere. Sort of a contraction, I've heard it called a contraction, like, like so what is so bad there's a judgment. <laughs> but what is it about this stress that is harmful to the health of our body temple? See, when we were in the caveman days, when we were hunter-gatherers, it was very important that when we recognize a sign of danger, that we're prepared very quickly to respond to it. Um, you've, you've heard it called fight or flight. And I've recently heard it fight, flight, or freeze. But the point is, is all of the resources in the body that go to the major muscle groups to get us ready to do one of those three things. So those resources, our blood, you know, which is carrying all the oxygen and nutrients to the cells, goes to those major muscle groups. So where do they not go? They don't go to our inner organs. They don't go to our brain. They don't go to the other places in the body. They're also needing resources. So the more time, the more percentage of our life that we spend in this 
fight, flight, or freeze mode, which is really what we're doing when we go off center. If you really look at your body, you can see it for yourself. We're robbing our most important to our life, or most important to our immune system, systems. We're robbing the systems that are most important to our autoimmune system in favor of sending those nutrients to large muscle groups when there's really is no danger. When we don't really need to fight, flee, or freeze. There's just some error thinking that has entered in due to some outside situation that has put us into that mode. There are appropriate times for that. But more often than not, when the modern human being enters into that mode, it was some false trigger that brought us there we can practice the golden key and stop thinking about the difficulty, whatever it is, and think about God instead. We have denials followed by an affirmation. We have the Moses Code and the welcoming practice. I briefly touched on it already. Feeling where it is in your body, that's the first step. Giving it a nice little name to just just to let it roll around in your, in your consciousness what it is. What is this thing? Realize that it actually is a part of me. And not only a part of this being, but it's a part of the universe. It, it's part of source. And remember from last week, Everything that's in this world is good. It's how we see it that gives it the appearance of the evil that allows human beings to do things that have that appearance. But the evil has no power of its own. And when we turn back See, from the welcoming practice or one of these other techniques. So the, again, the welcoming practice starts by finding in our body, giving it a name, being with it. Let this be the longest step. And then at the end of the welcoming practice, we release. We just set it in spirit's hands. If we feel a tug, Pulling us off center again, now we're following the line. We follow that tug in that direction. That's the line. That tug pulls us in a direction off center. We just follow that line and then start the welcoming practice again. What does that make me feel? Where do I feel that tug in my body? And we go through this, the next step, which is giving it the funny name. The funny name. It's important that it's a funny name so we don't take ourselves too seriously, that we're in that forgiveness mode already. And then release. So, very nicely. And when we do this, we can see the beauty in ourselves and in others. So I'd like to give each of you an opportunity, a challenge, you might say. Practice this with me. At some point during the week, find the opportunity. Observe yourself and realize that you have moved off center and find the opportunity to bring yourself back. Put in use at least one of the tools, the denial and affirmation, or the Moses Code. I am that. I am. Or the welcoming practice. Maybe you can try all three. But try them. Because it works if you work it. But if all you do is listen to me, or read it in a book, 
it does not have the effect. It doesn't have the effect of raising an individual vibration which contributes to the vibration of the whole. All right. I would like to share a song with you today. You may have noticed last week there was no song. Um, I got a new laptop and the default settings on it is what I decided to record with. Instead of testing it, I just started playing the song and when I listened back, my guitar sounded like it was underwater. And I couldn't figure out why, why was that? And I almost kept it in, but I said, no, I can't, I can't put that out there. It just, it didn't have the desired effect of bringing that meditative state, or at least not for me, because my ear kept going to that terrible sounding guitar. Well, I found out that the microphone was turned up to 97 out of 100. So my speaking voice didn't overdrive the microphone so bad. But when the Gibson started uh, vibrating, it overdrove the microphone. And there was some auto corrections in the, in the software of, of the microphone that kept it from making a loud popping sound, but it wasn't a desirable sound either. So I said this song is by Karen Drucker. It's called I See the Beauty in You. And remember, the talk was the glory within. And I see these two titles as being synonymous with one another. The three techniques that we talked about, actually four techniques for our spiritual toolbox, all have the effect of bringing our awareness to that glory within, to that beauty within ourselves, and within each person that we meet, whether we meet them face to face, online, or on the television. Spirit knows no distance. I see the beauty in you, I see the power in you, I see the greatness in you, so it is. I see the child in you, I see the sweetness in you, I see the softness in you, so it is. And I can see it, it's right there before me. I see the spirit in you, 
I see the truth in you. I see the love that's in you. And so it is. I see the Christ in you. I see the Christ in you. I see the Christ in you. And so it is. And I can see it. It's right there before me. And I feel it. Oh, deep in my soul. And I just know it. That you are an angel full of magic and power. And pure sweet love. Yes, full of magic and power and pure sweet love. And yes, I do. I see the beauty in you. I see the glory within each one of us. So remember, find that opportunity. And before we go, let us affirm together our prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. I am the light. The love of God enfolds us. I am the love. The power of God protects us. I am the power. The presence of God watches over us. I am the presence. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Thank you so much.